it's a pleasure uh, to be part of this webinar and i express my gratitude to professor kim yaman and uttarakhand royal society for inviting me uh, so i'm going to speak on the uh, kidney transplantation in abnormal uh, bladders so esrd to do dysfunctional lower intact abnormalities accounts for about 50% of kidney transplant in the adults and about 20 to 30% in children as uh, the transplant has progressed uh, over the last uh, five to six decades the abnormal urinary bladder is found to be a not a contraindication for kidney transplant so what is abnormal bladder basically there are two important uh, differentiations which we must have to uh, look into it one is the defunctional bladder where because of oligonuria the patients waiting for transplant the bladder becomes defunctionalized so there is no particular uh, definition for this defunctional bladders but around at all as uh, given a uh, definition that the urine output less than 3 ml per day and the bladder disused for several years constitutes what is called as the defunctional bladder so next group is the patients who have been diagnosed having neurogenic bladder where the urodynamic characteristics suggest that the uh, intravesical pressures are greater than 40 cm of water thereby increasing the damage to the upper tract and it impedes the urinary drainage into the bladder so these are the basic two groups of of patients where uh, who constitutes the abnormal bladders so coming to etiology uh, the basically the neuropathic conditions bladder outlet obstruction in the uh, uh, pediatric as well as in the adult uh, patients mainly constitute the posterior third valve and uh, the structure disease vesicular reflex acute warding dysfunction syndromes and diseases which affects the bladder um, particularly tuberculosis in our country interstitial cystitis post radiation uh malignancy and uh, intravesical chemotherapeutic agents as well as uh, perivesicular scars induced by pelvic hematoma and prior uh, ipsilateral kidney transplants so these are the patients who uh, constitutes the under the umbrella of an abnormal urinary bladder so it is always uh, better to implant the ureter into the uh, native bladder so we need to assess the uh, the safety of the uh, native bladder um, uh, before kidney transplant so what are the aspects which we need to look at it are the bladder capacity the literature doesn't specify a definite criteria what is the minimum bladder capacity should be there in choosing such patients uh, then we need to look at the history uh, of previous urological diseases or previous as the uh, to rule out the, pre, uh, the as a etiologist which has been discussed in the previous slide so this is one of the most important thing which will determine the success of the uh, ureter reimplantation and long term graft function and the other thing is that we look at the bladder wall morphology so if the bladder was scarred and thick wall then probably we might have to look for other alternative options then the role of bladder cycling bladder cycling is excessively practiced in many transplant centers but the value of this the pre transplant assessment is not clearly defined in literature urinary flow rates the institute of urology in london divided uh, it, uh, uh, way back uh, defined that the urinary flow rate should be at least 12 to 20 cm of water even before the pre transplant but there is no objective value uh, defined in literature and, and the least and the, and the most important thing is the urodynamic parameters so if the leg pump pressure is greater than 40 cm of water then there's increased chance of uh, damage to the transplanted kidney so uh, first uh, we need to rehabilitate the uh, non compliant bladders the native bladder we start with medical management using anticholinergics and intermittent self catheterization plus or minus bladder cycling if the still at the end of this uh, if you have the bladder capacity doesn't exceed more than 100 ml or as a voiding pressure greater than 100 cm of water then probably we have to uh, go in for augmentation cystoplasty for considering transplant so basically the goals of management will 
is the creation of a of a or facilitate normal drainage of urine from the kidney into the reservoir which is created creation of a, a low pressure reservoir which is capable of holding urine for a socially acceptable time and volitional emptying of the reservoir with confidence it should be devoid of infection and we need to perform minimal surgical procedures to achieve our outcome and thereby reducing the patient trauma so in the pre operative evaluation it's very important to have a proper assessment of urologic diseases particularly the diseases from childhood and the various kind of urological interventions that has been performed on these patients next we look at the scars in the body the presence of uh, catheters and stomas which may potentially interfere with the site of transplant as well as the uh, the mode of urinary uh, impl urotic implantation then the basic urine analysis culture from the voided urine or the bladder wash and ultrasonogram to assess the post void residual urine in these patients so next two important uh, investigation in this group of patients the urodynamic study and the basic purpose to assess the capacity compliance the uh, uh, the voiding phase and the sphincteric function and the voiding cystic urethrogram uh, there are two schools of thought in, uh, in these patients uh, the evaluation of these patients uh, uh, sometimes voiding urethrography has been uh, overutilized but the current consensus is that it's required in selected group of patients uh, particularly uh, the patients with uh, vesicatory reflux uh, post urethral valve patients patients with high residual urine volume and patients with stricter disease so in the, when you look at the principles of surgery in these patients is that it's always better and uh, implant the graft ureter into the native bladder so if the graft ureter is uh, the, if the bladder is found to be unsuitable then probably we have to in, uh, consider implanting in an augmented bladder or a continent diversion or into an enteric conduit always try to preserve the native dilated ureter for a future ureter cystoplasty if if you are uh, con considering a cystoplasty at the at the time of transplant or prior or after transplant uh, clean intermittent self catheterizations in these patients uh, does not increase the risk of subsequent urinary tract infections and low dose antibiotic prophylaxis is recommended in these patients to reduce the risk of post operative uh, pyelonephritis so let us look at the transplantation in special situations on augmented bladders the timing for augmentation is contentious uh, so, uh, uh, some group of uh, transplant surgeons would want a transplant or uh, augmentation before transplant because it avoids the uh, complication of recurrent pyocystitis due to mucus production and then to prevent any damage to the vascular pedicle during transplant ureteral anastomosis but there are other groups who believe that the uh, augmentation can be done after transplant because uh, we can uh, it it uh, uh, it allows the healing uh, which can be compromised due to immunosuppression so basically if uh, with the trans when the aug augmentation is done prior to transplant it is timed about about 68 weeks before transplant and bladder cycling is performed in the interim to maintain the bladder volume and to remove the mucus secretions so then uh, next segment of patients where the bladder is unsuitable for augmentation or for ureteric implantation they can be considered in the form of an, an enteric incontinent or a continent diversions the incontinent diversion is uh, most commonly is, uh, can be performed with a small bowel segment or in few cases with a large bowel segments as well the goal of the uh, the diversion is to create a low pressure and a low volume reservoir a few technical consideration in these patients is uh, this that the conduit is created about 68 weeks prior to transplant and the renal allograft uh, can be placed on the same side of the transplant or on the opposite side if the on the same side the conduit is placed retrocecally and the graft is placed upside down to reduce the distance between the conduit and the uh, graft ureter to uh, to facilitate Uh, and to reduce the amount of absorption of the electrolytes and the anastomosis performed uh, into site ureteric 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 anastomosis instead of searching for the proximal segment of the bowel 
which may be uh, surrounded by dense conditions of previous study. So with, when you look at the entry content divisions, uh, uh, this is for required in patients who refuse to have uh, urinary appliance. Hence, the reservoir is created a uh, transplant, something like an augmented cystoplasty. And there are a couple of uh, case reports where uh, the transplant pyrotid has been implanted in the of the bladder. Uh, but the data is, uh, uh, short-term data is only available and the instance of complications has been very high in this group of patients. So the other group is the patients who have a cutaneous retrostomy, preoperatively. In these patients, it is imperative to get a preoperative urotography to rope the presence of strictures. And, and when they are doing transplant, the native kidney nephrectomy is performed on the graft uterus and anastomos to the proximal end of the native cutaneous retrostomy and thereby not disturbing the cutaneous retrostomy at all. The other group uh, of surgeons have suggested the graft uterus can be used as per se as a cutaneous retrostomy, but uh, it is actually with. Uh, this is a number of complications and usually not preferred. The advantage of cutaneous hysterostomy is that it eliminates uh, bowel interposition and the complications associated with the bowel interpositions as well. Uh, but the complications of cutaneous hysterostomy include uh, graft pyelonephritis, stomal retraction, stenosis, and ureter interosmic stitches. The complications of uh, the augmentation of a bowel segment uh, includes recurrent pyelonephritis of the graft uh, and the incidence is very high in this group of patients requiring long-term antibiotics. The chance of urinary leakage, metabolic acidosis, uh, particularly with the small bowel segments, calculus formation, vesicular cutaneous fistula, bowel complications, parastomal hernia, uh, stomal stenosis, uh, perforation of the bladders, with increased pressure, and mycotic aneurysm and hemorrhage as well. In these patients, the postoperative care is very critical. The suprabic catheters are left to drain the bladder for at least two weeks post transplant, and antibiotic prophylaxis preferably continued for six to 12 months. In patients with AMC hepatic bacteria, on the long term, doesn't require antibiotics uh, except when patients demonstrate uh, urea splitting organs in the urine in order to avoid steroid cell formation. Periodic blood gas estimation to detect and treat metabolic acidosis, not to protect the bone resorption. Mucus production need to be managed by frequent bladder washes and alkalizing therapies, vitamin B12 to treat megaloblastic anemia, and long term surveillance, particularly to uh, identify stone formation in the reservoir and development of malignancy in the augmented segment. So, uh, those such risks are very, very low. So in summary, an abnormal bladder is no longer a contraindication for kidney transplantation. The goal is to uh, assess the native bladder, critically to assess the suitability for graft urinary kidney implantation. And the knowledge of the abnormal bladders uh, will help in providing a successful transplant outcome. Thank you.